speed. I can't wait. I mean, we are like three weeks away from this now. as we're talking the Vince McMahon documentary that we all thought had been shelved years ago is going to premiere with Netflix on September 25th. This is the executive producer who brought us tiger King teaming up with bill Simmons who created 30 for 30. And so many of us have enjoyed on ESPN. And I just assumed when Vince ran into all of his, we'll call it troubles a couple of years ago that, well, we would never see this. And then it would look when it looked like he was pushed out of WWE or left, however you want to frame it. And now WWE was going to Netflix. I said to myself, self, that'll never air. We were wrong. I thought once upon a time, it was going to be a 10 part series. It's going to be a six part series, an hour each. And allegedly Jr. they've, they've got over 200 hours of interview footage between talking to Vince, his family, his close friends, people he worked with and other talking heads in the wrestling space that were interviewed. And they're going to find a way to whittle down 200, over 200 hours to six hours, six different episodes here. And now Vince is on the outside of WWE. This looks a lot different than I ever imagined it would. I'm sure. What do you expect into this, uh, Vince McMahon documentary that debuts later this month? Well, it all depends on how much involvement in a production sense that Vince is going to have on the project. Uh, as long as he lets it flow and look, he's the controversial guy. And, uh, this is a hell of a story. I can tell you that, uh, Bill Simmons is really talented. Uh, you know, his 30 for thirties and all the things that he's accomplished, uh, are significant. And who, who's the guy that's uh, pr helping produce it. that was involved in something you mentioned, uh, Tiger King and Bill Simmons is Tiger King. That deal about the, the guy that had the, the, zoo yep. the Oklahoma, Oklahoma lions. Yeah. Yeah. God. Well, that was embarrassing for our state. Uh, but he's a, but look, it made money and it worked. Yeah. Uh, it so I, yeah. So I, 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 I'm anxious to see how much in depth on the production side and the storytelling side, the screenwriting side, uh, that Vince is going to have in this thing, he could make it or break it. And, uh, there's always a way at the end to make a guy whole to some degree. I expect that to happen here, but boy, what a hell of a story. I mean. If you're a storyteller like Simmons and the other cat, you you've hit the storytelling gold cause you can't write this stuff. It just doesn't seem feasible, but it is, and it's real. So how real it stays and how accurate the storytelling is, is everything about the success of this, you know, our, our, our beloved wrestling fans will know this story as well as the storytellers and, uh, a lot of them will. And so I'm, uh, I I'm excited to see it. I'll be sure as hell watching it. It's got, I'm intrigued by it because I'm like you, Conrad, at, there was a point in time where I thought it would never occur and ne right. never, never make air, but we were wrong on that one. I wanted to ask you, you know, I, I know they interviewed a lot of folks. Were you one of the folks they interviewed for this? No, I find I that not. interesting. Yeah, me too. Yeah, what, are you, what, are you, what are you afraid of? Well, I'm just saying it's not like well, not you, but yeah. what, or what's the, what's the powers to be afraid of? Why wouldn't you interview me? Well, to be clear, I don't think that WWE as a matter of fact, I know WWE didn't have any editorial control and neither did Vince, which is why a lot of people think maybe this won't be as fact-based as we want. Maybe it won't be, you know, as hard as maybe some of us would like to see. And others would say, yeah, but it's not going to be whitewashed WWE version of events. So maybe it is more down the middle. We'll see. But I do find it interesting that Bill Simmons crew didn't want to interview you. I mean, you were in the office during what most fans still consider to be the peak for WWE when it was at its most mainstream, perhaps. And, it's and not like no, no one closer to Vince than me at certain times, uh, of my tenure. Yes. Uh, right hand man type. Material. Yes. Yes. Uh, but I never got a call that, you know, maybe they don't know how to, they didn't feel like I was vi viable enough to, to uh, follow up. I would have been happy to do an interview. 
uh, if it had been, I had been approached, but that didn't occur. And I'm not sure why, uh, because I know every secret, every corner, the whole nine yards. So, you know, it's just, uh, I don't, my feelings aren't hurt because I wasn't involved in it. It might be better that I wasn't just to sake that I could, it makes it easier to watch because a lot of us hate seeing ourselves on television. So, uh, well, politically I could see why you wouldn't want to either, but that's the thing. If you weren't even approached, that's interesting to me. Cause it's not like you're hard to find. Like if Bill Simmons wanted Jim Ross, that can be done. It, it could be, it could be. Yeah. I don't know that what Tony Khan would have thought about it. And I certainly would have got his blessing before I proceeded. Sure. Uh, Cause I'm loyal to who I work for. And Tony's been awfully good to me. Uh, this assignment that I have where I'm doing the main events at the AEW pay-per-views is significant. It's a unique schedule. Nobody in, in my line of work has ever had anything like this offered to them. And I've taken advantage of it. You know, I, and I'd like to think Conrad, I hope that, uh, my work on TV is uh, holding up well and, uh, and, and working out good. So. I don't want to jeopardize that. I wouldn't jeopardize that for anything. Don't need it. Don't need the money. Uh, I just don't. So, uh, I, but I would, I would have done an interview. It'd have been interesting to see the line of questions that they had. You know, I just did an interview, a long form interview, uh, with the dark side of the ring guys and, uh, a lot of stuff about Mick Foley and, uh, they do a great job of, uh, getting to the questions and getting to the asking their tangible and viable questions. And I really enjoyed that. It's a two or three hour ordeal. Uh, I say ordeal, like it's a, there's a punishment. It wasn't, I enjoy, I, I enjoy working with the guys at, uh, dark side. Uh, they're good dudes. They, they've gotten great product knowledge over their years. And, uh, so, you know, but I still, I'm on the other side of the fence. And I'm going to be careful of that, uh, of my, of my positioning. And, uh, but I, I'm excited about the Netflix thing. I'm not a big net Netflix, uh, consumer. Uh, but that doesn't mean I won't, uh, change my, the air of my ways and certainly, uh, will enjoy watching the show. If, uh, you know, if somebody, if you get a copy of something in advance, I'd appreciate seeing it just out of curiosity. I will certainly let you know what comes my way. I wanted to see if you had a chance to catch any of bash at Berlin over the weekend, because WWE had a monster show. Uh, it was either a complete sellout or darn close to it. It was an all time gate record for arena business, not just for Germany, but for any WWE show ever in history. So high fives all around, but on the other side of the main event, when Cody Rhodes found himself at the press conference, the post PLE presser, he fielded a question about the person accusing Vince McMahon of all the details we all read together in January. And he wanted to know the interviewer did why has the locker room been silent and not said more about that circumstance. And I don't know if you saw that or if you caught Cody's response, but we talk about a no win situation where Cody finds himself trying to speak on behalf of the locker room. I thought his response was one where, when he was finished, I said, this is a guy who could sit in Hunter's seat one day. He handled it fabulously, but it was a pretty unenviable position to say the least. What say you? I questions that don't need to be addressed in that forum, uh, come up from time to time. Uh, Cody is a sharp kid. He's objective. Uh, he's brilliant and, and the wrestling space, as you call it, uh, just does a great job. Uh, and I love him. He's like, a, you know, when you've known somebody since they were in grade school and, uh, you know, or he'd hop in a truck with his dad and we'd go to lunch or we'd have a meeting. Dusty's meetings are unique to say the least. So, uh, uh, all good. It's all good. I, I like, uh, I love Cody. Uh, you know, he. Him leaving AEW was a big loss because he added so much to the locker room as far as guidance and support and leadership. So, uh, anyway, uh, it's, a uh, it, it, it's just, uh, it's just questions that people ask to, to get a, 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 a reaction. 
is it really journalism or is it sensationalism? That question didn't belong in that forum. Why has it, uh, the rest of the locker room talked about it? Are you shitting me? Right. What are you talking? Are you kidding? Why would you, why would you even address that at, at this point in time? So, uh, I'm, a. I, I, I wouldn't want anybody else on that roster other than triple H, uh, addressing that matter. And I'm sure triple H is smart enough to know that it ain't somewhere he needs to get near. Yeah. To say the least it's, uh, it's something that I'm sure a lot of people are ready to have just completely settled and behind the company in the rear view mirror. And I do worry. I know it's, I know that particular circumstance isn't going to be addressed in the Vince documentary, but you know, I don't think everybody thinks about this, but I couldn't help but think as we fans get excited about this documentary being released, can you imagine just the stress that Triple H must feel when he saw that news? Because not only is this going to affect him at home, because that is his father-in-law, that is right. his wife's father that they're going to be talking about. and dissecting. Grandpa, grandpa, man. The grandpa to his children. And now he's going to go to work and have to have similar conversations about that. And immediately after the next PLE, one of the first questions, you know, it is going to be about that. And it's like, yeah, we just like every time triple H turns around, like there's another fire to put out. I'm sure he's ready for all of this to be <sighs> behind him. And hopefully, you know, maybe it's October, maybe it's November, maybe it's December, maybe it's January, but. Hopefully he sees the end at the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. When is this, uh, documentary supposed to be released the 25th. So as you and I are recording it's three weeks from today. Okay. So it's around the corner. 